Yes, I know. But I figured, what the hell? I just made a video about it. They put a dev note out, I might as well go read it. So here we are. Now keep in mind, those of you guys watching this, I'm no longer a regular player. I did have a two week period, I came back for the collabs. Uh, I usually pop on like once every few weeks or something, so not a regular player. Might not have context for some of the things they're gonna talk about, but I'm gonna give my thoughts anyways, cause I'm in the mood. Let's do this. <clears throat> Greetings, honorable heroes. This is the Knight's Chronicle development. This update offers much improvement for arena and boss dungeons than most of you that most of you have been looking forward to. We've also prepared various events for each week. Thank you for your continuous interest and support of Knight's Chronicle. We are now going to talk about the update we've prepared for you. Arena balance reorganization. That should be good. Operations related to Arena will be fully reorganized. First, we want to adjust the automatic recharge cycle of the number of entries in Arena to improve the area where Arena is frequently played. Currently, Arena has a structure where the number of entries is recharged once every 10 minutes. Because of the structure above, Arena has to be played every 10 minutes to achieve a high ranking. A lot of players who enjoy the Arena have to spend a lot of time to play it. For this reason, the next update will improve the recharge time of Arena to once every 30 minutes, and the maximum number of Arena entries will be increased from 5 to 10 to reduce the burden of frequently playing the Arena. Isn't that like a oxymoron? Okay, let me think. So every 10 minutes to every 30 minutes. 10 total tries at the beginning instead of 5. is hard. Alright, so you will no longer need to play 10 minutes during midnight because you will have to wait 5 hours to get arena entry. And arena entries. Alright, number one. To me, and granted, I, I, I have a suspicious mind, but to me that is actually something to basically squeeze more money out of the whales because when I used to talk to Pepe and Kathy L about Arena, they told me that they would play so fast that even though it was a 10 minute refresh for all of their, uh, uh, you know, the tries they had to do to be number one or top 10 or whatever the hell, um, they would pay lots of money just to keep resetting it over and over and over. So you're spamming, I think it's crystals at that point, just bing, 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 bing. And so you gotta buy more crystals, so that's where the money comes in. But if you slow it down, that doesn't stop people from buying more tries. That stops people from playing more, if they want to play more, which I never felt like I had a gun to my head. And like, oh my god, I have to play Arena. And granted, I know most of you guys know I don't usually care about Arena in most gacha games, but... In this one, I was actually fairly high, like back in my heyday, I forget what my rank was, but it was like top, whatever the top rank was on uh, the leaderboard or whatever. Like I was right there, I was never top 100, but I was like definitely in the triple digits, I just forget where the hell I ended up. It was probably like 500 or 400 or whatever. Not bad for free to play. Now the arena dynamic has changed because you had the server, uh, the server merge and all that, all that nonsense, but... So to me, that is actually a... Just kidding, guys. We still want the whales to pay lots of money, but now the free-to-play is screwed a little bit more. That's what I see. Maybe that's not what they meant. I'm not saying that's what they meant, but that's what I see. So that doesn't really solve that problem, in my opinion. My opinion. But anyways, who cares? The second one is reorganization involving the strongest of arena. <clears> hmm... <throat> yeah. It is important to exert effort to get the high rankings in Arena, but in order to be at the top, you must also have strength along with effort. I just come to like a platitudes meeting, I feel like I'm at the bank. When I used to work for a bank and just middle management's just saying, At the end of the day, you want to know you did a job well done. Honor, strength, diversity. I hate that. Ugh, I hate platitudes. Alright, let's get... However, there are other ways of obtaining a higher rank in Arena, such as selecting your opponent to ensure your victory, 
You can do this by using the search again function, just like when the higher ranking, just like the higher ranking players are doing. In the current structure, hard work is needed rather than strength to be the strongest in arena. In the long run, we decided to change that change is necessary for fun in the arena. <clears throat> With that being said, the search again function will be removed for the top ranked championship tier. Oh, okay, I'm cool. With that. But we revamped it to compete with each other through strength and strategy so basically they can't avoid someone who like counters their team which i never heard from the whales that that was particularly like a really bad thing for them but i mean if it's an issue it's an issue i guess because you know you're just gonna go and fight and if you're well you know which heroes counter which heroes so it's never like a, oh my god i can't possibly fight this guy maybe it's changed since i heard about it but doesn't seem like it'd be something that would be that big a deal. But whatever, I could care less about that part, so let's see. The third one is the introduction of the winning streak system. For new players that have to play too many games to make it to the top of Arena, even though they do not have enough growth, this makes them lose interest in the process, so, that, so they avoid playing Arena. Eh. Yes. Let's see, we would like to solve these problems through the introduction of the winning streak system to help the lower ranking players in Arena climb to the top more easily. Eh, that's a mistake, but I'll, I'll comment on that later. Here, the additional winning streak points will be applied after two consecutive wins and the additional points will gradually increase until 10 consecutive wins. If 11 consecutive wins are achieved, the points that will be given will be given the same as 10 consecutive wins. Okay, so the problem with that is, if I am a new player or whatever, I'm starting to make progress in Arena because I recently got a new hero or whatever, um, I do not, in most cases, want to rush to the higher ranks unless I am specifically pushing to unlock the rewards that are granted. I assume they're still there based on the tiers that you reach. Other than that, I do not want anything with a winning streak because I want to, the higher you go, the harder you, it is that you're going to be playing teams, which means you're going to run into some groups if you're free to play that's going to say, oh, they have such and such a unit that's really super whale unit, whatever, such and such a unit. All right, I need to skip this team. Then you hit reset. As long as you're not in the top tier, reset. Oh, look, it's the same thing, reset. And that's going to happen more and more the higher that you climb up. So now if you're... If you are a PvP fiend, yeah, that consecutive streak thing is going to be great, but, you know, new players, I mean, new players probably aren't going to climb, climb the ranks easily anyways, but that gives them even less more, in less incentive to do so, because I assume most people are still trying to get the 10 PvP wins a day um, bonuses for the daily, but... You know, if in those rankings you keep on getting consistently matched higher up and then you you keep having to spend points to dodge certain groups, you know, I could see that going wrong, but whatever. Alright, the last part is about season initiation. <clears throat> Initialization. When the current arena season is initialized, the tier will be reset maximum of Crystal 3 for those who belong in Crystal 3 in the new season. There is a problem where you have to complete with the players from the championship tier on Monday and Tuesday at the beginning of the season. Yeah, correct. Despite the difference in each player's strength, the majority of them have the same problem starting at Crystal 3. In the next update, we will improve the quality of arena matching at the start of the season by resetting the rank of the players to Expert tier if they reach above Expert tier at the end of the season. Okay, that sounds like a solid change. Yeah, I definitely used to have that issue. <laughs> where you're like, oh look, the arena reset. Wow, where, where'd all these hard guys come from? Anyway. Boss Dungeon. We would like to make three improvements regarding Boss Dungeon. I've done Boss Dungeon. I can talk about it. Let's see. <clears throat> First one is diversification. There's that word again. Of play patterns. It's been quite a while since the team structures for the day-to-day -day boss dungeons has been fixed, and there's no big variable in the boss dungeon, so the same teams tend to be played all the time. 
We want to fix this problem by improving the roll to allow additional damage to be added if five allies are still alive. Hmm. In order to achieve a high score, you will need proper timing of tanking, damage, healing, and more strategic fighting will be needed while maintaining five alive. allies alive. We hope you will have fun with the diversity in organizing this team of heroes. I love how that's underlined. Through these changes. Um, see, here's the thing about diversity. Diversity is a good thing. Okay, great thing. Force diversity? Mm -hmm. uh. Like, you gotta let stuff like that happen naturally. So they could, like, massage things and be like, okay, here's this bonus. That's cool. Because right now, most of the people are just aiming for most damage possible. And you know why? Because they want to be high up in the ranking list. Uh, what... What I would like to see them do personally is, uh, what is the reward for keeping everyone alive? Like, give me percentages, give me numbers. Like, 20% of the damage that you did, 25%, 50%. Like, what's what's the incentive here so that people can start crunching the numbers for the DPS they're going to lose because they have to run, run, you know, Lydia or Ramu or whoever the hell they're going to run. And that's what I would like to see, but... I guess this is a dev note, so they're probably just still in the planning stages. <clears throat> the second is the daily and weekly hit reward upgrades. If you receive the daily rewards and your rank is 0 to 25% in the reward section, you will have some team related settings and hero growth going forward, and it will take a lot of time to get to this higher rank. However, even every time you have broken your own record, the rewards you acquire will always be the same, which is a problem that demotivates you to break your own record. For this reason, 0-5% to ranking reward section has been added to the daily ranking. In addition, the overall amount of gold sent and all the ranking reward selection has been increased. Okay, that's good. And the amount of enhanced stones in all ranking rewards has also greatly increased. That's good. In the case of weekly ranking rewards, 101st to 200th, reward section was added for the same reason as above. Um, well, I'll get to that later. Likewise, the amount of crystals, gold, and handstones to be sent to the majority of the ranking sections has been greatly increased. Also, the amount of enhanced stones in the gold box, which is obtained weekly, has also been increased. I would love if they could, like whoever wrote this paragraph, just condense it to all rewards have been increased. That's literally all you have to say. All rewards, including gold, enhanced stones, and crystals have been increased. There are two new tiers, but... So, that's good, but I mean, the... The 100 and 200 ranks, uh, let me know if you're free to play and you hit these ranks regularly. 100 to 200, or 0 to 100, or whatever the hell. Because uh, I'm guessing it's majority whales, and so you're rewarding the whales, which not a bad thing. Because they're paying money to be at those spots, but... if Because they're talking about like diversity and motivating and stuff. You really don't have to motivate the whales. If they want to be tops, they're going to go be top. You know, that's literally all you have to say. You're not top. What? Get my wallet, woman! Let's pay some fucking money! You know, like... You don't have to motivate people who are already highly motivated. That's my thing, but... Hey, more rewards for everybody? That's great. Cool with that. Lastly, the weakness guide for each boss has been improved. For example, if the boss Heliolant, which appears on Mondays, is in a state of taunt, Allies can give additional damage, even if the players already knew and used these weak points to aim for high score, there has been a lack of guidance in the game. In the next update, we will improve the display of weaknesses in boss dungeon information screens. We hope that you will actively utilize these weaknesses to achieve higher scores and break your own records. Yeah, that's great. That's cool, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that'll be really good for new players and stuff. Like, I can still remember all the all the weaknesses of everybody unless they've changed drastically since I played. I guess you never... But... Anywho, let's keep going here. Advent Sequential Application. For those who are new to Knight's Chronicle, Advent Dungeons will be the first difficult phase. You need to clear Advent Dungeons to enhance your heroes, and if your team has grown to some degree, you must challenge other Advent Dungeons in order to acquire even more glamorous heroes. 
Currently, the structure of the Advent Dungeon from the viewpoint of the new player is which dungeon should be attacked first. There is a part that is difficult to distinguish whether it is possible or impossible to clear by checking the degree of growth of your team. Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> okay. For new players, sure. In particular, since the 4-star Annihilation difficulty is located at the top of the special Dungeon Advent, when we check raw data, there is a high possibility that new players will challenge this Advent Dungeon, and when they do an experience failure, they lose interest in playing Advent There is plenty of different reasons for that, but I can go into that later. With that being said, in the next update, improvements will be made so that new players can experience Advent Dungeon sequentially. Oh god, this has the potential to be bad, actually. Let's see what they mean by that. For example, new players will have to clear the 1 star Hull difficulty Advent Dungeon in order to unlock the 2 star Hill difficulty Advent Dungeon, and upon clearing this 2 star Hail difficulty Advent Dungeon, 3 star Nightmail Advent Dungeon can be unlocked. This is a structure that progressively opens up the different level difficult levels by clearing it sequentially. In the case of collaboration of in and boss rush, with have, which have multiple difficulties, the sequence will be unlocked based on the lowest difficulty. All admin dungeons will be open to players who already cleared it. Okay, that was one thing I was gonna. And they will be able to enter the advent dungeons normally. Okay, so uh, this could potentially go wrong multiple ways. Number one, for those of us that were playing the game earlier, we know that say Tayo's dungeon, which is technically a four-star super hard or whatever the top rating is, advent. It's actually fairly easy, uh, assuming it's still the way it used to be. Compared to if you go and do, uh, what was it? The fire guy with the mask, where, like, the second boss in there is that beast guy that will fucking wreck you. You could pot potentially be, be able to beat Tayo and not beat that dungeon. I remember that was the case for me for a while, because I just didn't have strong water units for a really long time. Um... So, in that case, it's actually bad, because if Tayo comes around, I'm a new player, and I read the guide. Hey, I could get Tayo. Tayo would really help my team. He'd really help me farm and clear these things. Oh, I can't do it. I have to clear, uh... Okay, I gotta clear a uh, three-star advent. And boom, there's the fire guy. Okay, I'll do this. It's easier. And then you get... Just get wrecked by the beast, because you don't know what you're doing. You know, not a good thing. Not a good thing. There's a couple other instances of that where it could be the same thing, but... Oh, well. Yeah, I could see that going wrong that way. And in general, I don't like artificial limiting because... We know. We know. If it says one star or two star, okay, you're saying that most two stars are going to be harder than most one stars. We don't need... You know, and our handheld. Hey, Daddy, what's that? That's a three-star star dungeon, son. We can't talk about that, though. We're gonna go to that one-star dungeon today. Daddy, I'm bored of the one-star dungeons. Let's go do something else. Don't you talk back to me, boy. <laughs> you know. So, like, we know. You know? We know. <laughs> and, and on occasion, you can get a friend unit that will carry you through, especially now with as powerful as I'm sure everyone is. You could probably get a friend unit that'll carry you through a lot of harder dungeons. And they'll just tell you, yeah, just run this unit in the front, or whatever. And put them next to such and such unit, and then off you go. All you need is a healer, and blah 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 blah. But, so I don't like that personally, but... Whatever. Alright, skill de description improvement. For some heroes, skill descriptions were very complicated and difficult to understand. In particular, certain skills are described using two to three line sentences to describe them, just like this dev note. Long sentences are less readable. <laughs> I love how this is in bold. Long sentences are less readable, and it is a hassle to read the skill description repeatedly to understand it correctly. In the next step, the text description and the effects of a specific will... Wait, what? The text description of the effects of a specific will be removed. I assume they mean skill. And the removed skill text description will be displayed as a separate icon with the skill dis- Oh, okay, so it's basically like a... 
point of view style type thing. Within the skill description for a more intuitive view. Hopefully whatever they're doing this will be good. Who knows. Improvements have been made to the skill descriptions by allowing you to learn more of the skill fix by tapping on the appropriate icon. Okay. They say it's good, I'll believe them that it's, it's good. Rune slot expansion. Added enhancement order item. This is something that the top players are very interested in. In the upcoming update, the rune slots will be expanded to 700 slots. Yeah, that's cool. And an enhancement order item will be added to increase the enhancement rate of rune. Enhancement order item can be acquired through various events. So we hope that you can use this opportunity to get a high enhanced rune. Is that like like a uh, in Diablo when you would have like a set item drop and then there would be like an ancient version that was more powerful? Is that what they mean? I got excited for a second because I thought they were finally gonna put in a fucking organization system. So if you decide you don't like like accuracy or HP recovery or whatever, filter all my runes for HP recovery. Delete all runes that have double HP recovery or something like that. Like, that would be a godsend. We've been asking for that. At least I was, up until I stopped playing full-time. Pretty much since the game came out, and they never do it. Oh well. I was hoping that was what this enhancement order thing would be, but no, it's apparently an item, so okay. Rune set effect balance. The set effect level for some less preferred runes is raised to allow more types of runes to be used strategically. First of all, the set effects of regular runes such as Rune of Agility, Trigger runes such as Rune of Deception, Rune of Velocity, and Rune of Multi-Strike will be improved. Rune balancing will not stop on this update and will continue in the future. Great. Other improvements. XP mons can now be selected separately from Sill heroes menu and bulk selling has been improved additionally the only mission on the event achievement has been improved to always be on top of the summon it's not understanding okay so you can filter out xp mons from cell apparently the only missions yeah maybe it was just a thing about the order one thing they need to do is uh, make a complete all quest button or something like that if you just run all the dailies. I hate clicking on every one of them individually and then have to sit through the shiny to BING! Reward you've received one million times. BING! Second reward you've received one million times. BING! So just hit an all button. But oh well. Let's see here. In order to support the rapid growth of new players, we have changed the auto battle so that it can be accessed from Adventures 1 2. Hmm. See, I, I forget when auto battle is actually accessible, but that's great. Also, if you tap out here on the edit team screen, you will be able to select all five heroes instead of the traditional way of editing them individually. That's really good. This is to improve the convenience of setting up a team at once. Yeah, because sometimes I would click off on the wrong screen or whatever. Opinion on future guild battle development. Do not miss guild battle in any game except one. <laughs> that game's too old now. Guild battle improvement is not in this update. However, we'd like to express the development team's opinion because there is a constant request from all the players. Many players are telling us about the problems of guild battle. There are two main problems. One is the idea of integrating guild battle attack defense. The other is to improve the irrational defense matchup. First of all, Knight's Chronicle is being offered globally and all players are using the game in one same application. Therefore, when conducting the guild battle, players can be matched from different guilds in different countries. Diversity! If guild battle attack and defense are integrated, fair guild battle progress can be difficult if the guilds are matched during daytime in the dawn. If aren't the guild battles like 8 hours? It's just the way it is. Eh, yeah, we'll see. If the match is between the same region, it will be stressful to play. There are many issues and considerations that need to be addressed when it comes to integrating guild battle. It may seem to be too unreasonable to match guilds from different time zones. The rational defense matchup is usually the part where the ranking of the top guilds is determined by the number of matching times. 
Currently, the development team is considering improvements to this area. In the future, the development team will continue to consider improvements in fun and equitable guild transition. Um, Alright, number one. Uh, most of the whales from America and global, they all go and join, uh, you know, Chinese, Japanese, Asian guilds, Korean guilds. Because, like, I had it happen to me multiple times when I used to run a guild. Twice by the same person, a couple times by some other people. Two times and I got the same guy in two different games. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Even though I love the guild and I know all these people in real life, I gotta go be with the Korean guild because they just get stuff done faster and the farm rate's better and they're higher ranked. And it's really gonna be for the future of my channel and whatever. Of course, all of them stop playing. But... Um, you know, if people are willing to do that, you know, they're willing to operate on that time schedule, which is basically the complete opposite of their current time schedule. Then I don't see the big deal about when a guild is matched up with another guild. Now you can say, oh, but you know, if you're defending, you're at work or whatever, you're asleep. Look. It's kind of the way it goes, like, you know, you can talk with your guild leader to have them initiate the battle whenever would be most convenient for everyone in the guild, but for defense, man, it just might, that just might, that's just the way it is, you know? Because I, I think you don't even have to do anything actively in defense unless that's changed since I played. You just gotta set up your defense teams. Oh, well, whatever. But, like, Guild Battle, that's one of the three reasons why I don't play this anymore, because Guild Battle is a flaming chemical dumpster fire. It is such a bad mode. It was, like, one of the harbingers of bad modes in this game. There was, like, kind of like a domino effect of when this game got bad for me personally, and I'm not trying to put anyone off on the game. If you play it, you love it. Love it. Play it. That's great. For me, the domino was Aemon came into the game. And then everyone had to deal with Resolve, which they didn't put too many anti-Resolve heroes in at that point. And of course we had the Revive meta, good times. And then Guild Battle came out, which was all, you know, triple tank, double support, triple support, double tank teams, which is stupid, dumb, annoying. All types of issues, and Guild Battle has constantly been, even apparently to today, they're still getting, hey, fix this, hey, fix that, like, you guys, it's been... What was that, like August it came out last year? July? You know, it's been almost a year. <laughs> this should have been fixed like a long time ago. But oh well, development. That's the way it goes. Alright, epilogue. The update we introduced is a schedule for is scheduled for early May, along with the various other quality of life improvements. Early May now. We are also preparing various events to support the growth of your heroes. We are also preparing various events to support the growth <clears throat> every week, so please join us. And before we sign off, here's a little exclusive preview released for the first time. Pretty girl fighter, Ruby. Yeah, Ruby's getting a costume. Yeah, that'll make Sheik happy. Sheik loves Ruby. Pretty girl fighter. You know, one thing I never understood, why they always had to separate, like if, obviously Ruby's a fighter, and why do you have to put girl in it? Like, and I'm not trying to be like woke or SJW or anything, but it's like, why don't you just say gritty fighter Ruby? That would make more sense to me, but I guess they want to market it a certain way, so that's the way it goes. Supernatural girl, isn't it? I guess these are the next costumes coming. Both of them are really strong units already, so... I mean, I don't know how the meta's gone since I was playing, but they were always pretty strong when I used to play. Again, this is the development team of Knights Chronicle. Until next time, thank you. Alright, so let's see if there's any comments here. We got some love faces by Robin Jen. Amasa Oten. Yes, finally! Crystal rank will not be crowded by the noob whales. <laughs> noob whales, good times. Crowded Crystal Rank 3 is what makes newer players lose interest in Arena. Nice improvement. 
Oh, are Ruby and Esna gonna have their own awakened forms? Oh, EJ, if only. Okay. Nice work, KC team. This game only gets better, but I want to know if you guys are planning to do something with badges. I farm a lot of badges for my awesome costume, but there is a problem. I believe that just like runes, we should be able to reroll badges. I have actually three rainbow badges and two opal badges, six stars that are increasing accuracy, and I will probably never use them. In other words, the reward for my farming is pretty useless, and now I've lost interest in the badge system because I'm not properly rewarded. A new building in town would be nice, just like the heroic windmills for badges. Thanks. That's a suggestion. I personally never got into the badges at all. Like, I would farm them up a little bit, but... I could give a fuck about the badges. The badges were like... It, 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 to me, it was like a poorly implemented thing. You know, it just was. It's another thing to farm and spend inventory on and for them to alpha another pack, you know. Badge pack! Get ten six-star badges or whatever the hell they do. And lastly, Maxim Levis. Is there going to be Awakening Essence when summoning after 2.1 update or will it only be available through 4-star advent in Weekly Arena? No idea, no. Hmm. Well. Ah, like, most of that seems fine. I know I had some issues with a lot of the things and some of the things just seem silly, but, you know, they're trying to make the game better. I hope. That's cool. My major beef with the game, if you've never seen me before, um, I hate how they hold their PvE hostage, specifically their four-star advent dungeons. Ever since Nikita, and then it was Lily, and I think there's been a couple before since, and I forget the very last one, but it was to the point where whales couldn't even beat that dungeon until someone figured out a specific team of you needed costume Marta, costume Ramu. I forget all the other heroes that were in there, but the you know, you needed two costume heroes basically. Costumes are 40 20 bucks. Two costume heroes 40 bucks. Apparently you could do it without costume Marta, but I'm sure the the window for success is a little bit smaller. Uh, and that's the only team that's ever beaten that dungeon and that is a Super massive fail, and that is something that continuously keeps me back away from this game because I just think it's wrong to hold your PvE hostage, your four star admins hostage behind. Well, you can't beat this dungeon unless you give us $20. Okay. <laughs> like, then I guess I won't go to the dungeon. And. So to me, that's just a scummy tactic. I remember someone told me, I think it was about a month ago, it might have been two months ago. Um, hey, Doc. Yeah, the, the developers, they finally beat Callie's Advent. Callie's Advent? That's been out since, like, God, when? The May? Maybe like a year ago? What? Like, they just beat Callie's Advent. Yeah. I'm like, well, do they playtest some of these other Advents that they release? Probably not, if they're just beating Kelly's Advent. And Kelly's Advent, you know, it's not a walk in the park, but... You know, I could have rolled an account... Uh, three months ago, two months ago, and beaten the Advent by now. So, you know, assuming I got decent characters and everything, but... Ugh. What the hell's going on sometimes? But oh well, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this rendition. Um, way it goes. Seems like the team's still kind of the same. I thought by now they would have come up with like a team name, you know, like the Marduk team or something. That would be kind of funny. But anyways, guys, that's been it for me. So my thoughts. And hell, maybe I'll go over some other stuff at some point. But just to give you guys a treat, since I did another KC video. And I will catch you guys again another time. Uh.